Hi guys, I'm back. And today we are working with a brand new epoxy resin from a brand new little company, a little family run company called Hippie Crafter. They sent me some of this resin and uh, asked for an honest review on my channel. So that's what we're gonna work on today. We're gonna use their epoxy resin as well as their mica powders, their new mica powders. Um, and as you guys know, if you've been with me for a while now, you love, you know, I love, absolutely love mica powders pretty much in anything. Um, so we're going to mix some resin with some mica powder and we're going to do a little pour, a little idea that I've had for a long time. Um, and just never really got around to it. So in the box comes your resin and your hardener. This is 32 ounces a piece. So, uh, and this is a one to one mix ratio. So you mix, say an ounce of this with an ounce of that, uh, there, you can also do it by weight. I know it says inside the pamphlet, um, what the ratio is, uh, right down here. You can measure one part resin to one part hardener by liquid volume or 100 parts resin to 83 parts hardener by weight. Okay. So you can actually do it either way. I know that some of you, uh, like to do your, your, uh, your resin by weight. So, um, I don't, I've never done it that way. I don't even own a little scale. So, um, I like the one-to-one -one ratio thing. So this is the pamphlet that comes with it. There's a lot of information on here. Basically directions are going to be similar to any other resin that you're, you're using. You know, you want to make sure it's warm enough. You, the temperature's warm enough. Um, you don't want to pour this in 30 degree weather. It's not, it might not cure properly. Although I have poured resin when it's freezing and it just takes longer for it to, to, cure. So I, I don't think I've ever really had a problem curing resin. Um, the one time I did was, <laughs> was the very first time I used resin and I hadn't seen a bunch of videos on it yet. This was years ago. Uh, and, uh, I added, because we were, we had just started with the acrylic pouring. I had my paint already had Floetrol in it and that's what I put. And I think a little bit of water as well. And I put that in the resin instead of just strict paint. And, uh, if you guys want to go back and look at the, the video, it's that they actually turned out pretty neat, but <laughs> there's, they, they have this sandy grainy look to them. When the resin cured it, all the water like came to beat it up on the surface and stuff. And it was really strange. But once I cleaned that off and, and like the underneath cured, it was really rough. It felt like sand. It's like sandpaper. So then I poured another, coat of just clear resin on it and they actually worked out pretty well so go back and look like near the beginning somewhere along the way of my uh resin journey um it should it's probably like the first uh video in my uh resin playlist um anyway go back and look at it it's interesting so it does it does it does prove that you can actually completely mess up and occasionally get lucky and your resin will still cure no matter what you do to it so um but follow the directions because you have a much higher rate of success if you follow the directions so i'm not going to read through all these directions like i said very similar to any other resin you're going to pick up um sometimes the stir time is different sometimes the ratio mixture is different uh, and it gives you a little coverage chart over here, which is cool. So it tells you, you know, if you want, say, to cover 10 square feet, you've got a, a really big, say, farmhouse table you want to cover. Um, it tells you exactly how much of the resin, how much of the hardener you're going to need for a particular thickness. And it gives you three different thicknesses. So um, that's that's pretty good because usually when you get resin, you have to look up ratios and, and uh, coverages to figure out how much you're going to need. Um, and then it gives you some tips, of course, and, uh, on the back, you know, some warnings, of course, because it is epoxy resin. Um, just make sure that when you're working with this stuff, resin is not hard to work with. It can get messy if you're not uh, accustomed to it. Um, it's very, very sticky and it will cure on anything pretty much that you drip it on. So make sure your work surface is covered. I always cover mine now with plastic. I used to do newspaper way back when. Um, but the newspaper does really work well underneath resin. The resin does not soak through the newspaper. And so you can just use newspaper. 
and um, then just fold it up and throw it away once your resin is cured. Works really well. Uh, so, yeah, let's um, let's move forward. So, like I said, small company, family-run company. Um, so, if you you know you like what you see here, um, I will have their website, and uh, I'm going to try and see if I can get the link to this product. See if they'll send me the link to the product. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, hippiecrafter.com. Okay, and here are the mica powders. So let's move this. We'll go ahead and set these upright so they can come away from the top of the mica powders. Highly concentrated. Uh, it says on here, resin. You can add it to resin, paint, candles, soaps, bath bombs, slime, and more. Pretty much anything that you feel like putting mica powder in that's sticky, it'll work. So it comes in, in a nice little box, but then it's got a, a thank you card. It says, uh, if our pigments do not meet your expectations, email us for a full refund. Support at hippiecrafter.com. And then on the back, so if you order your mica powders and wait to order your resin, you can get a 10% off coupon for the epoxy resin. So, you know, I'm not sure, like shipping-wise, if that's going to make make a bigger difference in price. I don't know. But check that out. So here are the colors. We're going to move that box aside. There are all the pretty colors. And uh, I'm not going to go through each and every color and tell you the names of them. You can just see how pretty they are, though. Uh, and some of them, well, they all, they're all just gorgeous. So let's see if we can get a little close-up for you. Um, and it, it's kind of hard while they're in this plastic to really see how pretty they are. So uh, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to get them all out of this plastic. I'm going to put them back in the box because these little containers aren't, aren't uh, <laughs> connected. So I'm going to take them out of the plastic, put them back in the box, and then I'm going to choose what colors I'm going to use for our project. And I will be right back to show you what our project is. All right, so I've got mica powder, and it's just a little, you know, a, I used my little... Um, popsicle stick and just scooped it a little bit and put it in my little little cups here for the resin. Um, I want to show you <laughs> just two of the colors. I'm not going to show you everything. This one is wine. Let's see if we can get you to see. I got to get below the light source here. I don't think it's even coming up how pretty this is, but um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is so shimmery and, I don't know, it's like twinkling stars in the sky. And then here's the pink. I'm going to show you the pink, too. The pink is just, you see how shiny and twinkly, and this one almost has sort of an iridescent, really iridescent sheen to it. It's really gorgeous. So these are the colors I've chosen. We've got this, uh dark pink is wine this paler pink is rose and then i've mixed some rose with some of the white mica powder and then we've got in here we've got some yellow ochre mixed with the grass green and then that's grass green and this one is robin's egg blue which is probably one of my favorite colors in there as well because it's a turquoise and you guys know how much i love turquoise so um, one little mention about these little cups, these little, uh, it says 32 milliliters. These things are actually filled to the top. So when you unscrew it, be very careful because it'll just come right out. Uh, which is a, it's a good thing though, because a lot of times you'll order mica powders and it'll have these, you know, you'll see online these big, pretty cupfuls of them and then you get it and it's like half full. So, um, these are, are nice and full. So you can use them for a really long time because you don't need much when you're adding mica powder to resin. You really don't. Uh, so those are our colors. I'm going to set these aside for the moment so that we can kind of go over what the project is. So what I've done is I've gone and purchased a really super cheap uh, frame because I like the flat black frame. And we're going to take it out of it's uh, 
thing there. Throw the paper away. We don't need that. Make sure all your little clips are really mashed back. Take it out of its frame if we can get it loose. Sometimes these little black things are sticking out a little bit into the well. I say I'm going to take it out, but <laughs> it does not want to come out. Boy, I don't know how they got this piece of glass in there. Okay. I don't want to break the glass, and it would be really super easy to break this glass. Wow, it is really in there. Okay. So, I'm going to pause this real quick. <laughs> Technical difficulties. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So, <laughs> this did not want to come out. So, luckily I had bought two of these. Um, so, the other one managed to come out uh, with a little bit of difficulty, but it did. That's, you know, what happens when you buy, you know, not expensive stuff. So, uh, but anyway, I still, I like the frame. Nice, flat, black. No detail, anything like that. It's to take away from what our project's going to be. So what we're going to do now is I've printed out just a, uh, you know, a line drawing of something, of a flower here. Today we're using a flower. And I wanted it to be bigger than the glass because we're going to create a stained glass panel in resin, um, which obviously you probably knew by the um, title that I'm probably going to put on it. <sighs> but anyway... So what you want is your picture to extend past. Now, I would have liked for those to go, but then it kind of looked weird. So I figured out a problem. I figured out a way to fix that. Um, you see, like in stained glass panels, you'll have lines that go through like a solid color. Because with stained glass, I don't know how many of you have ever worked with stained glass. Um, I have. My mom did it when I was a kid, so I, I've done a little bit of stained glass. Uh, you have to, you can't, you can't have these weird angles in your stained glass because of the way when you cut it and you have to break it, you can't have weird angles. It, it doesn't work in some areas. So what, what we'll have to do is extend, because of these points, you can't have this point in there in your stained glass panel, so you have to draw some lines out from it. So that's how we'll fix that. So for our lines, our lead, our quote-unquote lead, uh, that goes in between the glass panels, we're going to be using some black puffy paint. Um, and I guess any brand will do. Uh, now, I did notice that with the uh, glass, the puffy paint tends to spread just a hint when you put it on there. Um, so it's not going to be as thick as you think it's going to be because it does spread a hint, but not too much. So we're going to take our bottle. And I'm not going to do the whole thing. I don't, I don't want to, you know, spend the whole time doing this, but um, I'm just going to show you. Uh, let's move our mica powders out of the way because I probably will dump. I've already dumped them over one time. Luckily, they didn't spill. But <laughs> um, and when you're working with mica powders, be aware they're very light and airy, and if you sneeze into them, they'll go everywhere, or cough, or pretty much even talk over them. So just be aware of that. So when you're doing this, you want to start with outside lines. And sort of go around because you don't want to have to put your hand over top. You don't want to start on this side and go across here. Um, and I like to move my my image around. So I did forget one thing. You do need to tape down your glass over your image so that it will not move. Once you've got your, your image exactly where you want it, then you're going to just tape it lightly down. Doesn't have to be real tight. And uh, that should be good enough. Just one more in this in this corner over here, just in case. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So we've got our lines there. Now we're going to just sort of trace over them. So I'm going to go to the center part first. And like I said, um, you have to, you know, and don't worry about it if you're kind of wiggly because you can see these wavy lines in the leaves. Um, and I'm not going to, I'm just going to go, I'm, I'm not going to follow some of these tiny little lines exactly because they'd all just melt together. 
and then we're going to go out this way and then you can see how this little line kind of curves up this way this one so you want to do this line first and then come back and go up through there because you want your lines to flow so you want to do all the lines that would fall in the back side so like if a leaf is on front, you want to do the leaf that's out in front last. So just take your time, go slowly. And now we can do this little line in here. And you want it to go all the way, even though it didn't on the picture, you still want it to go all the way because you can't just stop a line in the middle of, you know, stained glass. And see how those lines kind of kind of met and you know we're not gonna be able to get any color in there but don't worry about it it's not a big deal you know if you really loved that particular line then have a bigger piece of glass and a bigger printout so now we can do this line in here I hope you guys can see you know at least what I'm doing for the most part Okay, so I'm not like I said, I'm not going to finish all that out uh, on camera. I'll go ahead and do it off camera um, and then come back and show you the finished piece. Okay, so as you can see, I have painted the rest of the lines there. Um, and now we need to determine where our little uh, stained glass lines are going to go or on the outside edge just to sort of break up the solid background um, to make it look more like stained glass so it doesn't really matter you know how you put them in there so I'm just gonna sort of eyeball it and say let's do that one over there that one over there let's do that one that way and this one will take off in this direction and then down here we need to put a few few extras in there so let's go from this little edge here and we'll go off this way and let's go off that way just because my tape is sitting right there <laughs> um, we need to carry this line out that one's fine that's fine so everything else is fine all right so now the last thing we need to do is outline it so that our resin doesn't pour over the edge of the glass so here is where you have to start being a little more careful and not stick your finger in the middle of your little painting, if you'd like to call it that. It's a lot easier when you don't have gloves on, but I wasn't thinking. I hope my head's not in the way. Probably is. Sorry. Okay, so this is where it gets tricky. You don't want to set your hand down on top of it. So you just have to be careful. Um, and just go along the edges of the glass. And don't worry about if it's not perfectly, you know, perfectly edged. I'm just going to go all along the edge. Oops. Yeah, it kind of went off the edge there. You got to go a little slower. I'm just really just trying to show you this. Let's take it off of this piece of paper because I have uh, gotten some paint down on the paper. It'll be a little easier to see. Just move that out of your way. And then you can um, actually just wipe the edge of it off so that you can see if you need to put any more on that edge, which I think it'll probably be okay. Maybe a little more right there. Okay. So I'd really not like to get paint on this. I'd like it to stay nice and clean. We'll see what we can do about that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a little little more edge in here just because it um you know it'll keep the resin from flowing over. And go ahead and finish this out. It really is quite easy. Um, 
especially on a small surface like this. And normally I would not take, you know, I would not go so fast at this. Um, but for time's sake, I wanted to show you guys this. You know, show you really how easy this is. Oops, I think I just got on the paper. No, I can feel that I'm going off the glass again because I'm going too fast. But y'all just take your time. Almost done here. But you can see how it's a nice encapsulated piece. So hopefully our resin will not go over the side of that. Now, picking that up is going to be fun, so I'm going to take it off camera, off the uh, thing so I can pick it up off the glass. Okay, and I've got black all over that, but that's okay. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to set this aside to dry. Um, luckily, I already have another one done, so we can proceed. So let me set this down where it will not um, touch anything while it dries. Okay, and if you mess up, one thing to remember is that um, with that stuff, it comes, it peels right off the glass. Okay, so here we are with our finished piece, nice and dry. Um, okay, try not to spread the paint all over the place. Uh, it's nice and dry. It's been been dry for a couple days. Um, I'm just going to sort of angle it, but it looks, it actually looks pretty nice on the back side. So once you put the resin in, you can determine which side you'd rather have. Do you want it lumpy or do you want it beautiful and smooth? So what I'm going to do real quick is just, my fingers have been on this for days. So I'm going to go ahead and take an alcohol swipe and just kind of, uh, wipe over it real quick because, um, I don't want my fingerprints that have been on it for days to keep the resin from sticking to the glass. Just give it back a quick, quick clean. And do it really quickly because you can see a little tiny bit of the black might come off, but not really. There's probably more from my fingers than anything. Okay, so here we are. We've got our colors now. And we're gonna bring those over here. Um, and what we're gonna do, this one, the reason I mixed up a bunch of colors in there, I'm gonna try and make because there's a hint of stem right there. So I just want to, I didn't want to get out another color. So I just thought, well, we'll just mix all the colors together and see what we get. So we're probably going to do background and leaves last. Uh, because like I said, this, this resin doesn't have a long work time on it. Um, but that sometimes that's a really good thing. You know, you just want to be able to mix it up and be done with it and not have to keep babysitting it for an hour or two. Um, sometimes with some of the other resins that have longer work times, I have to babysit it for like three or four hours and keep blowing out bubbles. So this is, is kind of a good thing because <laughs> I don't have to worry about babysitting it after about, you know, 20 minutes to an hour. So, um, you know, I can cover it up and walk away from it. Uh, so we've got our epoxy and our resin. Like I said, it's going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video real quick and just pour my, my measurements out. And then I'll show you, you know, mixing them together. All right. So I've got my two measurements out and um, we're going to mix these two resins together. So I'm going to pour... I want to pour the thicker stuff into the thinner stuff just because I think it, I, ha, I have an easier time mixing it and making sure it's all mixed in there because it's really thick stuff sometimes it's hard to get out of the bottom of the little container that I've got it in. I think the thinner stuff mixes easier into, into it when I can. Um, but you want to make sure you get every last little bit out of there. Because if you don't, your ratio is not going to be similar. Nora, could you let Abby out? 
Thank you. Okay, so I have gotten everything out that I can possibly scrape out of there. I'm going to take a look at my time, and we're going to mix this for three minutes. And I don't want to mix it too hard, because one, I don't want it overflowing outside of my little container here. And two, the, the harder you mix, the more air bubbles you're incorporating. And air bubbles and resin is never a good thing. But um, when you're doing such small amounts like this and it's going to be so thin on here, it's really not going to uh, hurt anything to use the torch. The air bubbles will come out no problem, I'm sure. I have no worries about that. So you can tell it's kind of cloudy right now. Partly it's cloudy because it's still mixing. It's still, you know, it hasn't mixed properly and had time to, you know, chemically react with each other. And partly because of the air bubbles in there. But you can actually see, I hope you can see this, it's actually already turning clear. And we haven't even been stirring for like a minute yet. So um, scrape, your, scrape your edges while you're mixing. And when you pour this into another little container to mix up, do not use your same little stir stick. You're supposed to use a new one. Turning nice and clear, I can see. Um, easy to stir, easy to mix, and it's, you know, it's not that particularly warm in here, so it's, uh, you know. So far, pretty much like other resins, as easy for me to use as any other resin is. Um, and it looks nice and clear, very pretty. It's a nice, thick consistency. Uh, some resins I've seen people use are really super, super thin, and I actually kind of like the thicker better. So it's, it really has a nice, thick, creamy consistency to it. I know there's not a whole lot to talk about in three whole minutes. Um, and really, follow the directions. Mix your, mix your resin, especially if you're new to resin. Mix your resin for the three minutes. Pour it in another container for and mix it again for three minutes. Now, I probably won't do that just because I'm familiar with resin um, and you can kind of tell, you know, when your resin's been mixed properly and long enough, you can kind of, you know, you get a feel for it. So now we're gonna pour it into another container. I'm gonna scrape down everything. Scrape it all in there. And actually, this is probably enough resin for the entire project. So, I don't know. I may squeeze. I may try to squeeze this into all the, the uh, resin cups just because I really would like to not have to mix more resin up. But I want to keep an eye on my time as well because uh, with such a short pour time, I don't want to run into wasting mica powder, wasting resin getting frustrated, all that sort of thing. That looks pretty good. And then, you know, the whole additional three minutes thing is partly because when you're scraping it from another cup into a fresh one, you're going to have little bits of a resin or hardener that didn't get quite mixed in for one reason or another. So they just want to give you enough time to make sure everything is completely mixed in. And when you're working with resin, make sure that you have a nice space somewhere where it can sit off to the side and cure properly without having to be moved. Because if you move a resin project after it's cured partly, it can cause wrinkles in your resin. You know, you can pick up dust along the way. So, you know, leave it where it was sitting. Okay, so let's mix some of this into are mica powders and we really don't need much in each one so we're just going to pour a little bit in there it should be plenty for each little project and it just looks cloudy because it's so full of whoops so so see this is you know what i mean it look how pretty that is and i actually probably have too much mica powder for this tiny amount of resin but look how beautiful that is oh my goodness it's so gorgeous 
just make sure you get everything, all your mica powder mixed in there really, really well. It, it mixes in really, really well. Let's see if we can get you. I don't know if you can see that or not. Probably not really in focus for that, but. Oh, so gorgeous. All right. So knowing that we have probably not much time, we're going to go ahead, mix these other two really quickly, but not too quickly because you don't want your mica powder uh, puffing up in your face. There we go. Now we got them towards the, towards the light. I'm reminded of, never mind, I won't say it. Okay. Oh, so pretty, 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 pretty. Just mix it in really well. There we go. It doesn't take long to mix those resins in there. Now I'm going to take our white stick. Oops. Mix up our pale pink, which was white, and then the rose, the other pink. Now I thought about just doing a solid white and then kind of mixing it in, um, you know, with like a toothpick, kind of like stained glasses. But for this first project, I think we'll just go with, with this. So we've got our three pinks now. I'm going to go ahead and start adding to our glass. Now, once you um, torch this and warm it up, it should spread out. I hope. I don't know. I haven't worked with this yet. So, kind of push it. It's, you know, you want to push it to your edges, but not, not so much that you push it over the uh, edge of the black. After all, the black is supposed to be your border. All right, so let's put that down and let's take the torch to it and see if it see if it'll spread out on its own. Busted a lot of air bubbles there. Trying to warm it up. There we go. Now you can see it's kind of spread out towards the edges. We're missing that little point in the corner. So let's just do that. And there we go. And then over there. Okay. So we've got all the little edges there. And I, I don't really, I have no, you know, no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting these pinks just because I don't have a reference photo. Sorry, my hand is in the light, but it's uh, it's hard to do this without being super close to it. Okay, that's good enough for that one. Put that in there, let it drip down so that I'm not going over the edges here. Oh, that might have been a little bit too much for that, that little part there. Okay, and let's do as well. So, like I said, for a project like this, you, you really want to do it in batches because um, I feel kind of rushed and um, I really don't want to have to worry on whether or not I'm going to get it all done before my resin hardens. And, uh, you know, like I always say, when you're working with resin, have another project off to the side. Um, I don't with this one, unfortunately, just because, well, I don't know. I just don't, because <laughs> I was stupid. Um, but the, you know, you can pour these into like a pendant or something, just, you know, anything, anything that'll contain this beautiful resin or just pour it on the plastic and swirl it around, let it dry, peel off the plastic, cut it out and put it in a pendant. It's going to be hard to get down to that little thing. I probably need a toothpick. In fact, I'm going to get a toothpick so I can get one. I can get these to go down in that little corner there. But just look how pretty this stuff is. Oh, it's so pretty. I can see I've got a little bit in a little space right there. I hope my head is not in the way. I'm going to put that there. So let's get a little bit more. 
Okay, down in here. Okay, there we go. Oops, I put too much resin in there. It spilled over, unfortunately. That's a bummer. So don't overfill your things. I mean, I I I should have known better, and I you know didn't, but can't do anything about that now. But if you um really it really doesn't much matter if you um if you want to use the back side of this, which is probably what I'll do um, to put it in the frame, it won't much matter because you're black. Uh, obviously, your resin's not gonna your resin's not gonna go underneath this black. So your other your backside should be quite pretty. Okay. Oh, we missed that one over there. So let's see what color are we going to do that one? Um, 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 um. Let's do. I went to do that one, that dark pink. We'll do some more of the white. some of that and I can see right there I need to go to the edges so I will yeah now I've kind of turned this into a, a mess but <laughs> now I turned it into a mess okay now let's uh, see if we can let's put some dark red over here plenty and move let's see, this one we needed to move over right there we go to that corner I think it's in that corner already I think we've got it in all the corners now I don't see any white through the there we go okay so now let's torch it Okay, we're going to leave it like that. Uh -oh. That was right there, that little white spot. All that is is where my mica powder, um, clearly I didn't get it, that little spot mixed in well enough. It probably had some air around it. So there we go. There's that one. Um, we're running into, this is still pretty thin, so I'm going to give it a go real quick and hope that... Uh, Hope that this is going to work. So, it's getting thick, but we may have enough time. I think we'll leave the uh, the blue background. I'll mix up some more resin because I don't think I've got enough anyway. There we go. Stay up. Okay, let's get this done quickly here. Made it lovely, lovely, lovely limey green with that, with that green and yellow. That's mixed. Let's mix our our weird color here that we're not even really going to see much of. Oops. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's what. You, whoops. I'm heading the thing again. That's what you get for. Uh, Mixing over your thing. Okay. Ooh, that's perfect for the magnolia branch because magnolia branches are, they're brown and green and kind of a mixture of the two. So that's kind of a nice color. All right. And let's, I'm going to mix the green over here away from my project. And this would be good for like if you wanted to if you didn't want to hang it in a window you could put these in a light box and put them up on your shelf or on your wall okay so let's go ahead and get this in there super super quick so that our resin doesn't cure although as cool as it is um, my resin is not going to cure as fast as it would if it was a summer day. Okay, let's go up here. And there's a little bitty bit of it down. 
down there. Okay. I think that's that should be enough for these. Now I'm kind of gotten messy, but okay. Well, let's go ahead and do this one, and then we'll take the torch to it, and it should flow a little easier, a little more. Good for that one. You can kind of see where we're going with this now. It's looking pretty. These mica powders are so gorgeous. You guys know how much I love mica powders. So, okay, let's uh, torch that. Beautiful. All right, so we're going to move these to the edges here. spilled over but you know what it doesn't matter it's stained glass who cares right guys I mean really some of the stained glasses you see have a million colors in them so it'll be fine some of our little little black lines are thick enough to hold the resin in from going off the edges that's that's my main thing okay so we've got that um, all we have left is our little teeny tiny uh, <laughs> branch in there which you're really not going to see but we're going to put it in there anyway a little bit of this mixture dab it in there dab that in there and there we go okay so now I still have a little bit of resin left. I don't think that's even enough. Nah, it's not really even enough to coat all of those. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up a fresh batch of resin real quick off camera. And uh, then we'll be back. All right, guys. So I have mixed up some new resin and added my blue mica powder to it. And we're going to go ahead and add it to the last of the panels and try and be careful because I can see like some of my messy work is paying off some of the resin is spilled over our little barrier right here and uh, into the other color but that's okay because like I said we're gonna flip it over when we're done and um, sort of use the other side as the pretty. As long as we're not mixing the blue into everything, I will be happy. You see our green spilled over too because I'm using too much resin. <laughs> But you know, when you do, this is the first time I've done this, it would be nice to have um, some glue, some paint that would have a, a thicker finish to it. So other than puffy paint, if you guys know of anything that really has a real thick, thick height to it, uh, let me know. I'd love to try something else. That one's probably going to spill over because that's a bit much for that little space but that's okay as long as it doesn't go over our edge and yeah that's pretty much it as long as it doesn't go over the edge I'll be happy when you heat it up it, it thins out until it cures then of course you're just kind of stuck with whatever whatever it is but You know, you could do like little sun catchers with your kids this way. Like you let them draw their their design on there with the puffy paint because it's non-toxic. And then you go back behind them and work with the resin 
let them pick out the mica powder colors and you know right now while half of us are are all at home oh, I missed that little corner there um, let me give you some of that right there because I think there's too much of that right there um, you know let them pick out the mica colors and and let them draw on the on the you know your surface if you don't want them to, to draw on glass you, know, you worry about them cutting themselves as they touch the edge of the glass then buy a piece of plexiglass it'll work too um, now resin doesn't stick as well to plexiglass you can actually peel it off of it but um, you know anyway I digress um, Okay, let's heat this up a little bit. And you want to keep your flame, it's supposed to be, you know, six to ten inches away from your resin because uh, you can burn your resin. Done that before plenty of times. Um, and uh, with, with any resin, as with this one, um, it states in the, uh, in the, in the directions too. Um, that if you try and pour too thick of a layer, and we're talking about way thicker than what we're doing with here, um, you have to be careful because it creates so much heat that it will start to smoke and um, it could burn, catch things on fire, no matter, depending on what you've got it set on. So be careful about that as well. Um, I did that one time before. I had some resin left over in a cup and I didn't do anything with it. And really it was only, I think, about... It was just a little plastic cup that I'd mixed it in, and I believe it was about an inch and a half, maybe two inches of resin at the most. And um, all of a sudden, I look over, and it is just smoking like crazy. And I picked it up, and it was hot, very hot. Oops, my blue went over. Hopefully, it's just sitting on the top. It's not mixing in, and it's going over the edge, too. I need to catch that before it goes all the way over. Um, and, you know, I'm being a little messy here, but I'm kind of, I don't want this, <laughs> this video is all, already way too long, so I don't want it to continue to get even longer by, you know, really trying to be neat, neat, neat. So, I'm going to go ahead and pause it here, and we will pick back up when this thing is all cured. Okay guys, here we are. We're outside. This is the backside of it. And as you can see, um, I put way too much resin and it kind of spilled over um, in some of these areas. This one even spilled over into the blue. But uh, as you can see from the other side, which I'll show you in a minute, it didn't make any difference because um, you know I wasn't planning on using this as the front side anyway. So all this spill over is not going to make any difference on the front side. So I've just put the glass uh, into this little frame that we've got here. And um, you can see, I don't know if you can really see from there, but um, in some areas I realized I didn't get down into these corners. So I kind of stuck my finger on and <laughs> kind of moved the uh, resin around a little bit once it got real sticky and tacky. And it actually filled in these, like right here you can kind of see. Um, I, I just kind of moved the resin around with my finger and um, yeah, it looks like junk on the backside, but I knew I wasn't going to look at the backside, so it really didn't matter. Um, and it didn't make any uh, problem on the front. So, um, <laughs> so awesome for that. Uh, I really like this resin, even though it's a real quick work time, um, you know, anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes, it still stays sticky and pliable. Uh, for quite a little while after that so you can fix problems even after it starts to cure um, and it has a nice thick um, it doesn't pull up and uh, spread out real thin like uh, some other resins do so for that reason this this resin w is going to work really well for certain applications um, and uh, as you can kind of see it, it has a nice sort of domed effect I, I hope you can kind of see that where I haven't mushed it at all um so it's gonna 
even if you, you, you know, obviously do it on the front side, which most people will, it's going to leave a real nice effect. It just looks, you know, like I said, junky in the corners because I was mess, messing around with it and mushing it around. And of course this black paint doesn't make for a real uniform uh, border. So that's another, you know, that has nothing to do with the resin. Um, and I realized after I did this, you know, we were going for the stained glass effect, but <laughs> it's not real stained glass um effect 100 percent because i put too much mica powder in the resin and so it's more opaque i think uh, i will definitely try this again because it was a fun project and once you see the front side you'll see that it actually turned out pretty cool um i think i will do just a little tiny bit of mica powder in there so you can still see um the translucency of the resin and the mica powder um so let's turn it around and there sorry for the reflection of the trees we're outside here there is the finished piece I'm trying to move where you can kind of see but doesn't that look pretty cool sorry for the reflection of the trees in the background but you I just wanted you to kind of see how nice the reflection is um, in the glass but this really did turn out pretty cool I'm pretty impressed um, <laughs> I really, I mean, look at the beautiful colors of the resin. Absolutely. You know, mica powders are just absolutely gorgeous anyway. Um, so, yeah, I would say if you order anything from this company, I'm really super impressed with their mica powders. Their, the containers that the mica powder comes in. Um, the resin worked really, it was really easy to work with for me. Uh, like I said, again, it does have a shorter work time than some of the other resins so just be aware of that and do not absolutely do not mix too much resin at one time small small amounts until you get used to you know how long it's going to take you to work with a certain product and whatnot so I think this actually turned out really cool I'm super happy with it I'm definitely going to be working with this resin again in the future um, and as I always tell you guys make sure you have something on the side that you can pour your excess resin in because I had just a little tiny bit left so I happen to have this little um, it's just a little octagon shaped tile and as you can see I kind of superheated the resin a little bit with my torch and look at the cells in here you can see it in the pink a lot look how cool that looks um, and, and you can see nice, smooth finish. And I was not, you know, I didn't babysit this resin. Uh, I didn't have to go back and pop any bubbles. The bubbles were super easy to get out. And they didn't continue to appear in the resin. Um, I do have that problem with some of the other resins. So, uh, I didn't, all I did was set this off in my building. And that's another thing I wanted to say. Um, <laughs> my building is outside. Um, and it's probably about, oh, I don't know, 40, 50 degrees outside, uh, getting down to, you know, the 30s and 40s at night at the moment, at least for this week anyway. Next week will probably be different. Um, but what I wanted to say about that was it cured perfect. It's got this beautiful, smooth, glassy surface. And it sat out in my chilly, chilly building uh, to cure. And um, I believe we are, how many days later? We're like two, three days later, and it's perfectly cured. Uh, not a problem at all with it curing in the colder temperature. Because the directions say, um, you know, prime temperature is 70 to 85 degrees, I believe. Uh, but I had absolutely no problem at all with this curing. So don't, don't let that scare you. Um, my kitchen was chilly. My building was even more chilly. But I, I managed to just bring it out here. I set it down. I probably torched it once or twice after, you know, maybe a couple of times after I poured it. And that was it. And uh, this is how beautiful it turned out. So this uh, Hippie Crafters resin, I definitely give it a thumbs up. I definitely think you guys should order some of this. So their uh, website link is below. So check them out. And remember, they are a small company. So please, you know, support this company. And, um, you know, we need to support small companies right now. So please support this company. Order some resin. Order some mica powders. 
and uh, you know let me know what you think about it I really love this stuff so all right guys I want to thank you for supporting my channel in all the ways that you do and uh, again for supporting the small companies that we support through our our uh, purchases of their products and um, thank you for uh, watching the ads for me of course you guys know that who have been with me for a while that uh, watching the ads is really super important because it allows me to gain a, just a teeny tiny bit of ad revenue which allows my company I mean my company <laughs> I wish I had a company my channel to continue on um, yeah so uh, of course if you'd like to donate to my my PayPal account my, my account please um please check out my PayPal link below and uh, I hope wherever you are on the planet you're happy and healthy right now all right See you later. Bye.